Okay, hi. Hi, Margaret. Hi. How are you? I'm great. I'm well, great. Thank you. You look fantastic. Very thin. Well, you know, I... <laughs> What's up with that? This is my thing. It's like whenever I see people, I want that's what I want them to say. <laughs> you look so thin. Are Why? What, okay? does that mean? what does well, that mean? It's, it's just like because I'm a constant, like, I'm constantly, like, the, the always worried. Like, I was a really fat kid. And so... Um, the best thing you could ever say to me when I was younger is, oh, you look like you lost weight. Yeah, oh, you I know. look thin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, because I mean, you're always fat when people say, so you get, you sort of used to it. And then, like, because I also, like, was always on diet. So I was always losing some weight somehow, or again, gain, gaining it back. So I just got used to people saying, oh, you look so thin. And so when <laughs> they don't say it, it's like, yeah, I don't feel like I've been greeted. Yeah, <laughs> you say you say you were always a fat kid. I was yeah. too. It, that it's just like a devastating way to come up, isn't it? It's Being devastating. Being a little fat girl. Oh, it's horrible because you start to um, you really feel invisible. I think when you're fat, people don't look at you. People don't want to look at you. Like if you're a little girl and you're fat, it's like people don't even want to acknowledge the fact that you exist because they uh, see the pain there and they don't want to acknowledge the pain, like the pain of not being looked at like when little girls are always celebrated people are always saying oh they're so beautiful but if you're fat you don't get any of that and it's like horrible i, I remember yeah i like the way you see it it's a little different from what i see it but uh, i remember it was like you were kind of a bad you were kind of a bad out of you were kind of out of line yeah you weren't keeping in your place and being right. like you know you were taking up a little bit t more than you deserve of space i thought right. when i was that's exactly it. It's like you're you're taking up too much space, and then um, and you're also like because you've already uh, transgressed by eating so much, you are <laughs> always a risk. You're like yeah. there's a there's like there either a flight risk or some kind of risk that, that you're sort of looked at with a risk kind yeah. of attitude. Yeah, like you're you're a little bit dirty or bad or something. I yeah. always thought. Yeah. I. Uh, I thought that um, where I grew up in Salt Lake City, if you were a fat girl, then you compensate, because there's a lot of fat girls there in mm -hmm. Salt Lake, that they all compensate by being extra quiet. Yeah. You know, like, sorry for taking up this. But it was, like, really hard to be a fat, loud, yeah, like, rebel girl. Right. Were Which, you like that? Yeah. Well, I didn't become, I was really apologetic. I was an apologetic fat. Oh. Apologetic <laughs> fat until maybe about... 17 or 18 years old, but I was apologetically fat until I until I got fags Like <laughs> the thing about it is if you're fat you can't you just it's really hard to be just fat But then if you fat and you have fags you're unstoppable Because you could do anything like if you were fat and you have fags It's like you just you rule the school you rule everything because you have your minions and then you have your you know they bow to you and you get all this confidence because they laugh at your jokes i love gay men because gay men have always made me feel beautiful and acceptable and loved and and thin and um so that's what they did for me when i was growing up and they gave me a sense of control and power like oh i only need one person to listen to me to make me feel confident enough to to actually speak what what do you think it is about gay guys in high school it seems like you know that that's a very common thing even in my high school that Gay guys and fat girls, that was a, you know, the perfect marriage kind of thing. It's one of the things that I also, I really identified with your stand-up, like when you said, thank God for gay men because fat women would have no one to dance with. <laughs> and that's like so right, because they dance with me. They dance with me, they acknowledge me as a woman, like as a beautiful woman, and that really, I think, saved my life, you know, and it's really, really a great thing. I owe so much to gay men. Do you think that there's a big backlash of it, though? I mean, if you like, I, I think like when you look at the fashion industry and the people that go, "Oh, she has cellulite," they're largely gay too. So I think it has it has a bad backswing too. Yeah, I think that exists also. But in my world, the world that I am like the gays in my world, they sort of that doesn't they don't have that side of it. It's all just very supportive and really beautiful. I, I just feel like the whole fashion thing is largely gay men, and they are like seem to be. You know, they seem to have a big bite of uh, who's too fat for fashion. That right. Kind of, it kind of overrides all that other nice gay guy friend stuff. But it's also like, um, I think that when you're a, an oppressed minority, mm -hmm. like the only kind of power that you have is is uh, is to criticize in that way, in that yes. lashing out way. You know, like gay men have, you know, in their entire lives, like 
they, they've been uh, put down and, and um, had to sort of like, you know, ins- ass- all, ass- assault on their, their psyche. They're, in, you know, constantly insulted, constantly gay bashed, whatever. Right, all this homophobia true. constantly. So where does that pain go? Well, you're going to be, you know, whatever. You're going to be really bitchy and really mean. And I, I just wonder about it. It's some kind of uh, a reaction to the whole ideal of, uh, you know, the whole female ideal that we have in this culture that, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, everybody seems to gang up on it when it doesn't go exactly like the perfect... Uh, you know, un, uh, unobtrusive and, like you say, apologetic almost. Um. Mm-hmm. It's weird that, that that ganging up thing, like on online, sometimes there's pictures of Jennifer Love Hewitt or whatever, uh-huh. and yeah. she's a beautiful young woman. And then, and, you know, they, they said that she had cellulite or that she was like, looked like she had a fat, whatever. And, and she, I think she's beautiful, and I think she's perfectly, perfectly charming looking and perfect body, but for some reason online there is this permission that people give themselves where they could say this right. horrible uh-huh. things about other people it's just so nightmarish and then you know i want to see what they look like because i'm sure they don't look anything like jennifer love hewitt you know it's like yeah. weird it, it there's like it's like kind of still okay to attack a certain thing as long as it's like you know i i think it's okay especially online, to attack a whole female thing. And so yeah. I, it really grosses me out, like Hillary running and the things that were on just these, you know, pretty uh, progressive websites about women or women's bodies or their yeah. age. I mean, it's just like, man, have we, have we come even an inch along? Mm-mm. No. Well, you, with, with Hillary running, that sort of, you could see how, how much sexism really exists in society, which is so great about her running is that, you can see sexism is so deep that you can't even mention it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> you can't even see it. It's just so all for, all pervasive. It's so huge. It's such a big thing that it's like the sky. It's like how can you point it out even because it's everywhere. The misogyny there with, with that she had to deal with. It was really really intense. Uh, yeah, I felt it was like oh, I was like took my breath away all the time till I just I even stopped reading, you know, Huffington Post. Right. And, uh, you know, Daily Coast. I stopped reading it because it was just disgusting. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's scary elements in our country, but so scary. you know, when you like keep getting a, giving them a voice. I, I know people say, oh, freedom and this and that, but I wonder about that. Mm, it's I, weird. I wonder about the whole concept of beautiful, which is the name of your uh, yes. your tour. I like you to talk about that. Well, I call it beautiful because um, I wanted to talk about beauty and talk about how, like, what would happen if I just said I'm beautiful? What if I just started to just tell everybody that I was beautiful and just 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 accepted the fact that I'm beautiful and just started to act like I was as beautiful as any one of these beautiful women that you would see on a magazine or whatever? Like, just started talking about myself like that. What would happen? Or what? How do people react to that? And people really started to say that I was beautiful too. They would say, "Oh, she's really beautiful." Like, if you start saying I'm beautiful, people will start repeating you. <laughs> and just so the power goes to you so we can start saying that we're beautiful and it's like a really powerful thing and I, I, I sort of it, the, the whole show came about because I was talking I did one of those like radio interviews you know they do like a whole bunch and you do it like on the phone and you're talking to every morning DJ uh-huh. in the country and the guy asked me what would you do if you woke up tomorrow and you were beautiful what would you do if you woke up tomorrow and you were blonde and you had blue eyes and wow. you were five foot eleven and you weighed a hundred pounds and you were mm-hmm. beautiful? What would you do? And I was like, well, I probably wouldn't get up because I'd be too weak to stand, basically. And they, you know, didn't get it, didn't laugh. Or, but I, I just was so appalled that anybody would even ask that of me, and it, yet it is, never. It's pretty appalling. It's, it's pretty appalling. racist and everything. It's other racist, thing. yeah. But would they, they, the way that people view women. And the way that there's so much sexism and racism out there that he didn't even Mm -hmm. pause to ask me. Like it didn't occur to him that it was sexist, didn't occur to him that it was racist, didn't occur to him that it would be offensive. Right. You know, and it's really, um, it's really horrifying. So, you know, the show is about claiming that beauty and... What do you think beautiful is? I think beautiful, I think everybody is beautiful. I think everybody has a different expression of that beauty and it's whether they decide to claim it what sort of that that's sort of it you know everybody has the potential it's more if they decide to do it or not if they decide to be quiet fat or have fags you know it's Mm -hmm. like one or the other do you think that it's something from inside or is it something that I mean is it the way you look I think it's it's the way that 
you feel. It's something mm. that you can can really decide on. Like I um, work with this dancer named Dirty Martini, and she's really wonderful. She's this beautiful, really very voluptuous woman, very very like out of the Italian Renaissance, and she's a stripper. And uh, I love to watch her, and I love to work with her, and I love to watch her because she's got such a beautiful curvy body, and then she's like naked, and, and the audience is like so into it, and. And all of the pain that I have died away, all of the sadness, all of the times that I have like gone to bed hungry or gone to bed too full, because you know it's like I think of all the pain, and it, and and she is so much fatter than me, and so beautiful. So it's like I could instead of going on a diet, I could just go, I'm beautiful too. I'm beautiful just as she's beautiful. I'm totally beautiful, and like that's like such freedom. So when you can look at a, I think to me when you can look at an example of a woman who is maybe. Um, is physically larger, which is that everybody's fear is being too fat. So mm -hmm. if you look at a woman who's physically larger than you, who is gorgeous and beautiful, then it's really freeing because then it's like, oh, I can just decide to be beautiful. I don't have to lose the weight and, and I don't have to punish myself for being this size. And do, do you think beauty is something you have to do? I think beauty is just something you have to decide. Uh, that I like that. Feel I like that. It. That you decide on it and that. You know, and, and my hope is is that women will look at me and me saying that I'm beautiful and they're smaller than me and they'll feel like, oh, that means I'm beautiful too just because, you know. I, I got so turned off to the whole beautiful thing because I, well, I grew up in Salt Lake City and I was like the only dark girl, the only fat girl, the only, you know, and uh, they were all like, you know, they're all like thin, blonde, blue, you know, so. I, I, and and that was what everybody said, like your story, everybody said that was beautiful. So I, I sort of just got kind of turned off to the beautiful thing where it's like something else w is the thing that I think is cool because mm -hmm. I, I stay away from it, the beautiful and beauty thing because it makes me so uncomfortable. Yeah. I think it, it probably makes, maybe it makes all women uncomfortable, just that word beautiful. Yeah, because it's a, it's a judgment. Yeah. It's a, it's a constant judgment and it's a constant scrutiny. Like women are supposed to be beautiful and so you are constantly being judged where you fall on that scale. Oh yeah. And it's a, it's a very dehumanizing thing. Um, but uh, if you can decide where you want to be on that scale, if you can just say, well, I am actually really beautiful. I'm one of the most beautiful women who have ever lived. <laughs> I'm moving myself up mm -hmm. to scale and I'm putting myself in this position. That's like, it's a really empowering thing. Well, you went through a lot of stuff over the way you look when, you know, I, I saw your stand up and read stuff about, you said about, when you did television and yeah. that whole like image of beauty or even just being a woman or a female or anything in show business. I mean, let's talk about how hideous that is. So hideous and ridiculous. Like when I did TV, I did a sitcom and um, they were uh, so adamant about the fact that I was uh, overweight and they wanted me to lose weight and I so I lost a tremendous amount of weight very quickly. And it's so ludicrous now to think about it because I was really playing myself. So it was like I was too fat to be me. It's like yeah. dumb. So it's just insane, all that stuff. And then like when I, um, when, a, when I did my first screen test for my TV show, the, one of the executives came over and she said, please never wear anything that shows off your stomach. Never oh, show your stomach man. in public again. Please never. Oh, man. And I was so how did you, how did you, out. How did you like, you know, go on from that kind of like it's so... It's so humiliating. It's horrible. They seem to really thrive on humiliating people. It's really horrible. Well, I just became very anorexic, and then I like got. But you I know. mean, now, I mean, how'd you get here to where you're just well, like, now, hey, this is me, and now I just now I revel in the comfort that I have. You know, like I am like, and I'm doing this new TV show now, and so I'm like naked all the time, which you're is great. You're naked in it all oh the my time. God. See, I don't know how would you be okay doing that. I, you're, you're really different from me. Yeah, I'm really different. I mean, I'm I'm really okay with it, everything about that kind of stuff now, like body image, because to me, like... Were you ever not? Um, yeah, when I was younger, for sure. Mm -hmm. I was super shy mm -hmm. and super, like, guarded. But now I think that if I can show off my body... Like w women who are, you know, in their, you know, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, they can look at me and like feel better about themselves. Like I think they'll feel, can feel good. Like I think if you see a woman yeah. who is not afraid to just be naked, mm -hmm. and they're not perfect, they're, you know, whatever. It's like really empowering. So. I think it is too. I mean, you know, I, I'm proud of you. I think it's awesome that you you would do it. I could never mm -hmm. ever do it without having to like 
you know, kill everyone who saw it immediately <laughs> after. I'm not even okay to be naked with myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's like, it's, you know, you're a little bit younger than me, so maybe it's a generational thing too, but it was just so devastating. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that I'll ever get over it. I don't, I don't know if my, any of my generation will ever get over either the 60s, you know, the whole thing that the 60s did to us with the advertising images and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I think it's great that you are, First, it's amazing that you're okay to be naked. Yeah. And second, to like uh, be okay with the whole concept of being naked and do it. Yeah. Well, I did a show last year where I was doing burlesque in it. So I was like mm -hmm. naked in the show. And I was naked every night, 62 performances in a row. And it really helped. Like it really sort of cured my sort of constant fear of my body and constant mm -hmm. need to diet. and. Um, I don't know if anybody does this. This is a stupid thing that I do. Is anytime I meet anybody or talk to anybody, woman or man, I uh, first thing I think is, are they thinner than me? <laughs> like, really? Are they thinner than me? Okay, like then I'm gonna proceed. However, oh. it's like my eating disorder and my body image are so like uh, they're so alive in me, mm -hmm. you know, and that I have to do really. Me too, but things. I mean, then you go out and get naked. I mean, that's just I can't. Well, that's what, how I get over it. Is that I, I, oh. I, um, my cure is to go into worlds like burlesque, and to get naked, and to hang out with voluptuous women who love their bodies and who are, you know, totally okay with being curvaceous. And well, if you were like twenty or thirty pounds uh, fatter than you are, would you still do it? I think so. I think I might be, um, I think I, I, I would be even more popular. <laughs> Burlesque oh. is an incredible world where women, voluptuous women do very, very well, so. What do you think that's about? That's about celebrating. Just like, we have like lived in so much shame and, and tortured ourselves so much dieting and being in pain over our bodies. When we can actually like celebrate our bodies, it's such a party. It's such a celebration, which is why I love the world of burlesque because it is really a world that is all women, if for a women audience, it's not for men oh, at all. Uh -huh. It really isn't. I mean, oh, I could probably guys. get naked in front of women. I probably could do that. You could do burlesque because it's like a whole, it's like a mostly women and gay guys audience and they just want to love you. And they just want to like, through watching a woman get naked, they, they sort of um, heal themselves. They yeah, heal I can the pain that. Yeah. that they have over their own bodies. And it's really, it's beautiful. What happens as soon as you bring a straight man in there, though? Does that make you want to, like, fold up the tent and run? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's really, I don't know, it's a, it's a beautiful world. It's, it's like a really healing world. And that's why I, I love burlesque. It really helped me to feel exciting and beautiful and sexy and uh, not want to, you know, totally go on a crazy lemon juice cleanse or something. You're really a groundbreaker. You, you really are. I, I admire you and everything you've done. I think well, that girl, she's a first all the way down. Well, thank you. So you're going to do, why are you going to do a reality show, though? That, that's kind of freaky. Isn't it kind of reality? Why wouldn't you do another sitcom? That's what everybody asked me, too, so I just want to ask you that. Well, this is really good. This kind of, a, this situation, like the, the show that I'm doing, the reality show, is really a sitcom. It's what's really great about it is that we, uh, we did the show. We sort of made it, and it's not like any traditional reality show where people follow you around. It's very, very scripted. It's very... Mm -hmm. um, put together so it's like a sitcom and it's like my parents and my friends and in this world it's it's um, to me it's so uh, unique that it really is sort of a new kind of sitcom so I don't really view that's it cool. as a reality it's very cool that's cool so this will be you is it your first time back on television yes. since your since I did All old. American Girl um, many years ago yeah so wow yeah it'll be my first time and I'm excited because I, I love the show and I think it's really great. Well, and you have really more smart. control this time. Yes, I yeah. have. I'm a producer on it. Finally, yeah. you know, I'm actually like, you know, there. So I, I have lots of control. And VH1 is amazing because they really give you so much creative control. They let you do whatever you want, which is really amazing. So I, cool. I love that. That's quite a switch. Isn't yeah, it? totally different. Yeah, totally different. Whole new day. It's well, not quite as much money as it used to be. Oh no. But, but maybe it's better because we. I think people get more freedom and less money, which is always well, good if you're an yeah. artist. Yeah, and then you can you can do different stuff. Like I think television has really changed too. So it's like so much 
freer and so much more fun. I, I'm, I'm really happy there. Well, I'm glad that you're back on television. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk to you about, uh, you know, uh, George Carlin, who just, he died last, last week. First of all, it was so shocking. I know. He was so young. What a wonderful guy. I mean, he was really um, influential for me just watching stand-ups and he was so smart and, and so um, political, but at the same time, like, he wasn't polarizing. Like, people, <laughs> he was political. It's, like, really incredible to be political and not polarizing. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, totally different. Like, it's a different era, really, in a lot of ways. But he was just so, so brilliant, and I really loved him. Let's talk about stand-up. Like, what made you decide that you wanted to do that in your life? I just knew like I watched people like George Carlin or Richard Pryor um, and people uh, just like even like Joan Rivers who was mm -hmm. really um, almost not she was doing more like Tonight Show stuff but she was really she was I remember seeing her on Saturday Night Live and doing stand-up and it was really incredible so you know the, these these people really impressed me and moved me and when I saw them I realized that's what I was like I I would see like Steve Martin and I go oh well that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm going to grow up to be. And that's sort of how it came about. It wasn't really so super like, it was more like, oh, I just, I recognize that as going to be my job. Because I started pretty young. I started when I was 14, so 16. And, and you were, you were always like super political in your stand-up though. I think it just, that sort of developed as I became a more political person. Like more mm -hmm. in my 30s, I became more political and more um, interested and aware of what was going on. And, and um, I was always doing a lot of gay, gay stuff. So doing a lot of gay benefits in the 80s and 90s. And so I was always in this, this sort of queer world. Um. I don't have any more to ask you or say, I don't think. Do you're a you? good interviewer. You're a really good interviewer. Well, you're a good subject to talk to. Thank you. I try to keep it to a half hour for the That's really people. Cool. I just like had a blank too. Like I, I think it. we covered. Do you have anything else that you want to? Well, I think I want one of these studios for myself. Isn't it cool? Come and use this anytime you want okay. to. It's really a great idea. It's like really smart. Just you, so that like whenever you go to work, you could just go to the same place. I, I wanted, I had this idea, I started to do it in 1993 or 4, um, the idea of, uh, you know, owning your own content in your own studio with your own venue to show it on, and then, like, I was like, everybody was like, the internet, the internet, and, uh, you know, I thought the internet was going to be a lot like television, and mm -hmm. um, so that's why I did all this, but uh, it isn't a lot like television at all, mm -hmm. and, you uh, for instance, you have to do it all for free. Yeah. And uh, it's okay, though, because I, I came to terms with it like, well, you know, I had the money, and I put it here. And I still have this, like, really scary feeling sometime that, you know, all our freedoms and, uh, you know, speech and everything will be taken away from us. I mean, I have that huge fear, and so mm -hmm. I like, keep it for, like, well, I'll have, like, some open channel for artists and people who oh, want to say things in case we lose it. But, of course, you know, they'll just come and close it down. But, I mean, do you worry about that kind of stuff? Um, I don't really worry about it. I don't really worry about it. I guess, no. I mean, your book, you know, I've chosen to stay and fight. Yeah. I mean, I, I was like, I thought that was pretty cool that you had chosen, first of all, that you had chosen to stay and yeah. fight. Because I want to just get the F out of here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know. I know. Well, it's... But it, it's like, I think that, yeah, we, it would be great to just leave. But then it, then everybody else is still here, you know, and having to struggle and, and suffer. So if you have the ability to somehow um, alleviate their suffering, you should, you should stay. You have a responsibility because you're so talented to help people, you know, with your perspective. And well, you said that to me in the airport, was it in Vancouver? And I've ne I never forgot it and think about it a lot. And uh, that's why I thought, well... I guess that is true, even yeah. though I don't want it to be. Do you think that this whole country is like it's some serious, do you think it's seriously in trouble or do you think it's better? I think it's, I think, I hope it gets better. I mean, I hope things get better. I think things will be a little better. I think people are excited now that we can get rid of George Bush and mm -hmm. start over. The thing is, the problematic thing is that they might go to McCain, which is really scary. That's what, that's what like terrifies me. Or, I'm scared Or that, if yeah. they start you know, nuke in Iran before, I know. The, before the election so Bush couldn't have martial law. That scares That's me. That's really scary, too. But I, I don't, 
I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like a lot of faith with people that, that, that things, things are changing and that they'll get better. I'm more optimistic about things now than I have been in the last several years. So That's what I'm really sensing from you too, that you are a lot more optimistic in, in a yeah. lot of ways. Is that because of, is that because of body image and, and, and that? I think so. And I think it's also because, um, um, I think it's also because of other, the, my upbringing, because my parents, it's like, my parents are super, it's like, at least you don't have to eat bark off of trees. Like they're right. super like, my parents, grew, you know, grew up during the Korean War and like they're so used to starvation and all this like shit. So they're like, oh, this is nothing. Right. You know, it's like when they start to round you up and put you in a camp, when they change your last name, then call me. Like it's like, then they're totally yeah. like, you know, oh, this is nothing. Are you are you first or second generation American? I'm first Amer generation wow. American. Wow, see that, that's really, that's odd. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm third generation.